call to order the Public Improvement Commission, Thursday, September 3rd, 2015. Public hearing continued item number one on a joint petition by the Massachusetts Port Authority and Exelon New Boston LLC for the widening and relocation of the existing right-of-way lines of Summer Street, Public Way, South Boston, on its easterly side, generally 250 feet north of Powerhouse Street. New business, July 23rd, 2015. Public hearing, August 20th, 2015, as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Widening and Relocation Plan, Summer Street, South Boston, one sheet dated April 5th, 2015. Good morning. Good morning, uh, Jerry Friedman, HDR Engineering, representing Massport. Um, so this is an element of the uh, Massport's Conley Terminal Freight Corridor and Buffer Open Space Project, uh, specifically the uh, implementation of the new signalized intersection at the uh, corner of Summer Street and the new freight corridor. Um, the uh, design has been fully vetted with the uh, Boston Transportation Department. Uh, this is designed to provide for a uh, left turn lane dedicated coming into uh, the freight corridor and uh, Massport uh, constructing the new signal. Um, at the new business portion, there was a request to provide a payment marking plan, which was provided to PIC uh, staff last week, which everyone uh, should have that shows the uh, width and length of left turn lane. Just to refresh my memory, Jeremy, Jerry, uh, how many trucks do we anticipate this taking off of, of the thoroughfare? Uh, based on car numbers, uh, upwards of uh, 2,000 a day, and as the terminal expands, more and more. Definitely positive impact on this. Impressive. Good. Any? Good. Well, so, so. Do any members of the audience have any questions or comments? I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the joint petition by. Mass Port Authority and Exelon New Boston LLC for widening and relocation of Summer Street in South Boston as described and read it to the record by the chair and shown on a plan entitled City Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division widening and relocation plan for Summer Street in South Boston dated April 5th, 2015. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Public hearing continued item number two on a petition by the Massachusetts Port Authority for the making of specific repairs within Summer Street, South Boston, located on its easterly side, generally 250 feet north of Powerhouse Street, and consisting of curb realignment, roadway and sidewalk reconstruction, as well as new and relocated pedestrian ramps, traffic signal infrastructure, street lighting infrastructure, landscaping and retaining walls. New business, July 23rd, 2015. Public hearing, August 20th, 2015 as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Specific Repair Plan, Summer Street, South Boston, five sheets dated January 5th, 2015. Yeah, again, Jerry Friedman for HDR for Massport. These are the, the actual uh, curb realignment, sidewalks and ramps have been vetted with the uh, Accessibility uh, Commission and all other city departments. Jerry, um, the new catch basins that have to be Yep. Reconnected. Yep. The contract is required to come in and get permits for those. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So all of the uh, street drainage work uh, has been captured in a, a site plan, 14252, from the commission, and contractor will be getting the, uh, the permits. Yep. Again, any members of the audience have any questions or comments? I'll, a, I'll uh, entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the petition by the Massachusetts Port Authority for the making of specific repairs within mm -hmm. Summer Street, South Boston, located on its easterly side, generally 250 feet north of Powerhouse Street, and consisting of curb realignment, roadway and sidewalk reconstruction, as well as new and relocated pedestrian ramps. Traffic, 
signal infrastructure, street lighting infrastructure, and landscaping and retaining walls. All is shown in a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division Specific Repair Plan, Summer Street, South Boston, five sheets dated January 5th, 2015. Second. All in favor? Aye. So moved. Thanks. Thank you, Jerry. Public hearing item number one. On a petition by the Brigham and Women's Hospital for the making of specific repairs within the following public ways in Roxbury, consisting of new vehicular wayfinding signs, new business, August 20th, 2015. Binney Street, two signs on its southeasterly side, generally between Francis Street and Shattuck Street. Fenwood Road on its southwesterly side, generally between Binney Street and Vining Street. Vining Street on its northwesterly side, generally southwest of Fenwood Road. Francis Street on its southwesterly side, generally between Binney Street and Brookline Avenue, as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Specific Repair Plan Brigham and Women's Hospital Wayfinding Program, Boston, Roxbury, three sheets dated July 23rd, 2015. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Mary Marshall of Nutter, McLennan and Fish. With me here today is Steve Dempsey, who's the head of design and construction at the Brigham, and Lisa Chow at BHB. We are here before you, um, who will we'll go through the details on the plan. We are here before you to request um, the ability to install wayfinding, four, way, uh, four freestanding and one wall-mounted, all wayfinding signs specific to the Brigham. We have worked with, with you all and with Masco to make sure that there's the ability to uh, have redress and uh, direct conversation with the Brigham to the extent there's any issues with the signage. And I'd like to introduce uh, Lisa to just to go over the preliminary plans for the signage. Uh, good morning, Commission. Lisa Chow, project engineer with VHB. As presented two weeks ago at the new business hearing, Brigham and Women Hospital would like to request the approval of four freestanding vehicular signs and one mounted parking ID sign um, around within the public right away around the hospital. The five signs are immediately adjacent to hospital facilities. There have been no changes to the plan since um, new business hearing. Are there any other questions at this time? Just, just on the installation, um, the proper setback for the foundation, recently one of uh, an existing sign was recently hit because the offset wasn't correct. Just make sure with the installation that we get the proper offset. Will do. Thanks. Thank you very much. Great. Uh, any members of the audience have any questions or comments? I'll entertain a motion. I'll make, make a motion to approve the petition of Brigham and Women's Hospital for the making of specific repairs um, in Vinny Street, Fenwood, Vining, and Francis Street. <coughs> All is read into the record by the chair and shown on plans entitled City of Boston Public Works. <coughs> Department of Engineering Division Specific Repair Plan, Brigham and Women's Hospital, Wayfinding Program, Boston, three sheets dated July 23rd, 2015. Second. All in favor? Aye. So moved. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. <coughs> Public hearing item number two on a petition by the abutters for a street name change, renaming the entirety of East Service Road Public Way, South Boston, between Seaport Boulevard and Congress Street to be officially known in the future as Pier 4 Boulevard. New business, August 20th, 2015. Good morning, Commissioners. Morning. My name is Emily Yu. I'm from Lock Lord. I'm here on behalf of SCD L2 Seaport Square LLC, one of the co-petitioners here. And Peter Kohansky is here representing MS Boston Seaport LLC, the other co-petitioner. Um, the petitioners have decided to withdraw this petition at this time. OK. I'll entertain a motion to withdraw. I'll make a motion to approve the petition approve the withdrawal of the petition. The abut is of the street name change for East Service Road, South Boston, a description of which has been read into the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Thank you, Emily. Thank yeah. you. Public hearing item number three, on a joint petition by SCDL2 Seaport Square LLC and MS Boston Seaport LLC for the layout approval of Autumn Lane, private way open to public travel, South Boston, connecting East Service Road and Boston Wharf Road, located generally between Seaport Boulevard and Congress Street. New business, August 20th, 2015, as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Approval Plan, Autumn Lane, 
private way open to public travel, South Boston, one sheet dated March 2015. Good morning, Commissioners. Emily Yu from Lock Lord, representing SCD L2 Seaport Square LLC. Um, we also have counsel representing MS Boston Seaport LLC as well. I'm going to turn it over to um, my client, Carolyn Desmond, project manager for Skanska on this project, who will give a very brief overview of the project. And then John Schmid from Niche Engineering will discuss this plan. Thank you. Hi, I'm Carolyn Desmond from Skanska. Um, most of you know about this project, uh, 450,000 square foot office and retail tower in the Seaport District. Um, master developer of the Seaport District. Seaport Square is MS Boston. We purchased the site in 2013. Um, two floors of retail, 50,000 square feet, 15 floors of office. Um, the building will be, the retail will be conveyed to our partner, development partner, WS Development, and um, expected delivery of spring of 2018. The application uh, for you in the private way, the layout of the private way is bottom lane, which will run from Boston Park Road, East Service Road. Bottom lane is a private way. It's actually constructed over the garages of the L1 building, 101 Seaport Boulevard, and proposed building L2, 121 Seaport Boulevard. And again, it goes from Boston Park Road to East Service Road. It actually serves as a back of house for, um, for deliveries, the garage entrances, loading docks, that sort of thing. Um, it's a 60 foot wide private way, and we'll provide sidewalks on both sides. Snow and ice control? Snow and ice control? Yes. Yes, so it will be privately maintained as, um, as by the owner. Thank you. Any members of the audience have any questions or comments? I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the joint petition by SCDL2. Seaport Square LLC and MS Boston Seaport LLC. The layout and approval of Autumn Lane, described and read at the record by the chair, shown on the plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, and the original plan for Autumn Lane, a private way open to public travel in South Boston, dated March 2015. Second. All in favor? Aye. So moved. Public hearing item number four on a petition by SEDL2 Seaport Square LLC the acceptance of a pedestrian easement adjacent to East Service Road, South Boston, located on its northwesterly side, generally southwest of Seaport Boulevard. New business, August 20th, 2015, as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Pedestrian Easement Plan, East Service Road, South Boston, one sheet dated March 2015. Good morning, Emily Yu on behalf of the petitioner. Um, I'm going to turn it over to John Schmid from Niche Engineering to discuss this easement. This pedestrian easement will run from Autumn Lane to Seaport Boulevard. It's a two foot wide pedestrian easement and allows for the construction of uh, sidewalks that comply with the complete street guidelines as well as the master plan for Seaport Square. That the pedestrian easement um, allows for a six foot wide concrete sidewalk for safe and uh, accessible access. Again, any members of the audience have any questions or comments? I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the petition by SCD L2 Seaport Square LLC with acceptance of a pedestrian easement adjacent to East Service Road, South Boston proper, located on its northwesterly side, generally southwest of Seaport Boulevard. All is shown on a plan and the City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Pedestrian Easement Plan, East Service Road, South Boston, one sheet dated March 2015. All in favor? Aye. So moved. Public hearing item number five on a joint petition by SCD L2 Seaport Square LLC and the MS Boston Seaport LLC for the making of specific repairs within the following public ways in South Boston, consisting of curb realignment, roadway and sidewalk reconstruction, as well as new and relocated pedestrian ramps, specialty pavement, street lights, street trees, landscaping, traffic signal infrastructure, drainage infrastructure, and irrigation infrastructure. New business, August 20th, 2015. Seaport Boulevard, 
Boulevard on its southwesterly side, generally northwest of Pier 4 Boulevard and East Service Road. East Service Road on its northwesterly side, generally southwest of Seaport Boulevard, as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Specific Repairs Plan, Seaport Square Block L2, 121 Seaport Boulevard, East Service Road, South Boston, two sheets dated March 2015. Good morning, Commissioners. Emily Yu from Locklord on behalf of SCDL2 Seaport Square, LLC. Um, John Schmidt from Niche Engineering will be discussing the specific repair um, plans uh, for this project, which are all consistent with the specific repairs plan for the Seaport Square project at large. Uh, this application allows us to continue to reconstruct the sidewalks in Seaport, uh, in Seaport Square to comply with the complete street guidelines as well as the Seaport Square master plan. Um, this commission has approved the sidewalk construction up to the edge of L1 and L2, the edge of 121 and 101 Seaport Square. We're now proposing extending that construction to the intersection of East Service Road and then down East Service Road to Autumn Lane, the private way. The, um, it provides uh, pervious pavers, concrete sidewalks, street trees, street lighting, all in compliance with the Seaport Square master plan. Um, we do propose a bump out here that will not be constructed until a future date when the parcel across the street comes online. At this point, it will only be constructed as a conventional sidewalk with a straight edge. So that will be taken up in a different vote? That will, <clears throat> this, this bump out is yes. part of, this bump out is part of this application, but will not be constructed until a future date. It is also in compliance with the other bump outs along Seaport Boulevard. Do any members of the audience have any questions or comments? I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the petition of SCDL2 Seaport Square LLC and MS Boston Seaport LLC for the making of specific repairs within uh, the following streets in South Boston, consisting of curb realignment, roadway, sidewalk reconstruction, as well as new and relocated pedestrian ramps specialty pavement, street lights, street trees, landscaping traffic, single infrastructure, drainage infrastructure, and irrigation infrastructure. And Seaport Boulevard East Service Road is shown on plans of Title City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Specific Repair Plan, Seaport Square Block L2, 121 Seaport Boulevard East Service Road, South Boston, two sheets dated, dated March 2015. Second. All in favor? Aye. So moved. Thank Public you. hearing item number six on a petition by SCDL2 Seaport Square LLC for the granting of an earth retention license for the installation of a temporary earth support system within the following public ways in South Boston. New business, August 20th, 2015. Seaport Boulevard on its southwesterly side, generally northwest of Pier 4 Boulevard, East Service Road. East Service Road on its northwesterly side, generally southwest of Seaport Boulevard, as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Temporary Excavation Retention, 121 Seaport, East Service Road, South Boston, one sheet dated March 2015. Morning, Commissioners. Emily Yu from Lock Lord on behalf of SCD L2 Seaport Square, LLC. I'm going to turn it over to John Sch Schmidt from Niche Engineering to discuss this. Uh, good morning, Commissioners. This uh, soil nail earth support system uh, runs along at the intersect runs at the intersection of East Service Road and San Seaport Boulevard. Uh, the soil nails project into the public way approximately nine feet. They begin their their projection about three feet below grade and about ten feet below grade. And the reason we have the soil nails here is because we are over the MBTA Silver Line Tunnel. We have provided this uh, the Commission a letter from the MBTA stating that they approve of this approach. Um, at New Business, there was a request that we, be, we clarify the exact location of these nails, and they are now shown on the plan, and that plan was distributed earlier this week for comment, and I believe everyone has, has either has indicated that they support this. Yeah, just for the record, uh, we did uh, receive that, that email with the uh, uh, revisions and the Thank you. 
Any members of the audience have any questions or comments? I'll, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the petition by SCD L2 Seaport Square LLC, the granting of an earth retention system in both Seaport Boulevard and East Service Road, described and written with the record by the chair, and shown on the plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, a temporary excavation retention system for 121 Seaport East Service Road, South Boston, dated March 2015. All in favor? Aye. So moved. Thank you very much. Public hearing item number seven on a petition by Cafe Nero Americas Incorporated for the granting of a sidewalk cafe license for seasonal outdoor seating within Tremont Street, Boston proper, located on its southeasterly side, generally northeast of Union Park, and consisting of seating for 21 persons and approximately 262 square feet within the public way. New business, August 20th, 2015, as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Sidewalk Cafe Plan, 53 Union Park, 564 Tremont Street, Boston proper, one sheet dated March 26, 2015. We're actually waiting for our land surveyor who's just entered the building. He should be here in a minute or so. Okay. Um, if you could just go over some of the facts that were brought up in He's new right business. Right oh, there is. Okay. Good morning. My morning. name is Attorney James O'Mara. I'm here on behalf of GA Donovan Management and Cafe Nero regarding our application for to uh, operate a sidewalk cafe at um, at uh, the, uh, the Union Park location. Uh, George Collins, our land survey, is also here, and he's going to be reviewing the plans for you guys. Hi, George Collins from Boston Survey. Um, since we were here two weeks ago, basically there are no changes to the plan whatsoever. We're still the same amount of seating. We have the three foot oh, um, accessible route and we're basically asking for 21 seats in the cafe area, 262 square feet. And we have five foot pedestrian passing on a concrete sidewalk. Hi. At New Business, you were asked to show the fire connection. The fire connection is right here on the building. That was one change we did make on the plan. On the on these um, petitions, um, I have no problem with the cafe. What's that? I said I have no problem with the cafe, but the, the building that it's in, uh, where the cafe exists, who owns the building? It's owned by uh, the owner is Fred Kiley. Fred Kiley. Does he support this? He yes. does. Yes. He submitted a letter with the We have a letter. We have a letter yeah. from the owner yeah. of the building. Okay, thank you. Don't forget the level of service uh, analysis and looks good. Let me anticipate the cafe upon a, a vote here today. When, is, is this something for next spring? Uh, uh, we're actually open now. We're waiting to install the patio. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any members of the audience have any questions or comments? I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve the petition by Cafe Nero Americas, Inc. for the granting of sidewalk cafe license for a seasonal outdoor seating within Tremont Street, Boston proper, located on its southeasterly side, generally northeast of Union Park, and consisting of seating for 21 persons and approximately 262 square feet within the public way. All is shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Sidewalk Cafe Plan, 53 Union Park, 564 Tremont Street, Boston proper, one sheet dated March 26, 2015. Second. All in favor? Aye. So moved. Thank, Thank you very you much. Have a great day. First item of new business, Mount Vernon Street, Dorchester, specific repairs, grant of location, 
private utility license on a set of petitions by the University of Massachusetts Boston campus. Good morning, Commissioners. My name is uh, Ed Lambert. I'm the Vice Chancellor for Government Relations and Public Affairs at the University of Massachusetts, Boston. On behalf of the University, we appreciate the opportunity to present our petitions for work to be undertaken on or under land owned by the City of Boston, uh, as will be uh, described in our grant of location and specific repair plans here today. Next Tuesday uh, represents 50 years to the day when the University of Massachusetts, Boston opened its doors uh, down in Park Square. And about 10 years after that, we moved out uh, to Columbia Point. So for the 40 years we've been there, we've been attempting to be good stewards of that property. And in order to meet the needs of the students for the next 50 years and beyond, back in 2006, we started developing a master plan uh, that for the last several years, uh, the City of Boston uh, has uh, uh, provided guidance and support uh, for. And so we are very appreciative of that. We look forward to that partnership uh, going forward. Uh, the focus of today's petitions is a project that we affectionately refer to in our plan as the UCRR, the Utility Corridor Road Relocation uh, Project. It is probably the most complex of all of our master plan projects, uh, but it's certainly essential to fulfilling uh, all of our other plans. Uh, for folks who are familiar with our uh, campus, uh, you know that back in the uh, 70s, uh, uh, we have inherited uh, both some design and construction challenges from that time. Uh, we were built on a substructure. Uh, that has since deteriorated. Uh, our utilities are in that substructure. Uh, and so this project is to not only pull those utilities out and run them around the campus, but help us uh, uh, with our uh, expansion plans uh, and to ensure that we have an updated infrastructure that meets the needs of students going forward. Uh, there are a number of other benefits that come with the plan as well, not only in, um, improving our infrastructure, but access to Columbia Point. Uh, we're very proud that our campus is host to the JFK Library, the Edward M. Kennedy Institute, the State Archives. Uh, we have uh, plans to upgrade sidewalks and bicycle access, plant 600 trees, uh, deal with uh, relocation of the utility lines and roadways, reconfigure traffic flow, uh, upgrade utilities, and certainly make important connections. And so uh, this is a project being done in multiple phases, and what brings us here today is a critical step to reconfigure and install new utility connections between University Drive West, Mount Vernon Street, and the new University Drive North to support the various institutions on Columbia Point. In furtherance of this effort, the University and the UMass Building Authority, which is also represented here today, respectfully request that certain actions be taken by the Boston Public Improvement Commission. And I'm now going to ask our colleague, Kevin Wright, to introduce our request for these actions. Thank you. Good morning, Commissioners. As uh, Ed has stated, uh, I'm Kevin Wright from VHB. Um, I'm here on behalf of the University to walk you through the actions. VHB is assisting in the permitting efforts. I'm here today with Dorothy Renegan of UMass Boston, Jim Velleman of BVH with the Civil Engineers, Ann Sherling of Sasaki, uh, as well as we have Tim Dorman from Josh and Lesher and a few other folks from the University as well. Uh, we've mailed out the necessary engineering reports, utility notifications, and plans to the necessary city agencies and utility companies, as well as lead company telecom letters and plans to the participants uh, as dated on August 24, 2015. Um, we've received responses and have been coordinating with uh, several agencies since that time. At this particular time, I'd like us to walk through the grant of location plan. Uh, per the plan, we plan to install a uh, new BWSC owned 16 inch water lines, 12 and 18 inch sewers, 24 and 36 inch drain services. All of these have been uh, brought through BWC through the site plan approval process that have been approved. Um, we plan to submit additional plans depicting all private utilities and non uh, BWC utilities per the, for review per the request of uh, Commissioner Shea. Uh, we also plan to incorporate uh, the relocation of an existing hydrant that's north of the intersection in front of the Harbor Point Apartments uh, per the required code of Boston Fire Department and BWC. The university also plans to install new private fire protection lines and 16-inch wa water lines, as well as 24-inch uh, chilled water services and 16-inch hot water lines uh, in the public way to service the campus. We also have new University of uh, Massachusetts Boston telecommunications and electrical 
conduits and manholes in the public way to the northeast just uh, before the end of the half moon and the beginning of University North Drive. We have uh, new telecom services, duct banks that will be installed in the public way. As I said before, lead company letters have been sent out to the participants. Uh, list is given to us by the PSE. Uh, at this time, one duct in the eight four-inch conduits will be for uh, the university. Uh, we'll also have uh, one city, shadow of Boston, city of Boston shadow conduit as well in, in that eight four-inch duct bank. Uh, one of the conduits will be for the Boston Fire Department, and at this particular time, we're currently in coordination with Verizon and Comcast to finalize the appropriate number of conduits that they require. Once confirmed, we'll update our, our plans, grant of location plan to indicate the proper location of the required conduit per the request of Commissioner Moshe. Contractors will contact DigSafe prior to all start of construction work, and that concludes our grant of location items on the plan. Are there any questions? I'll turn it over to Jim to answer. The plans that have to be submitted for the um, utilities, for the separate ones, um, in order to get those in here, we want those signed before the public hearing, uh, which I assume will be in a couple of weeks. So you want to get those in next week. They're going to have to go four weeks due to a tree hearing. OK, so then you've got plenty of time. but. Take care of that. Thank you. Yeah, um, my antennas went up when you said uh, City Shadow. So, so you, um, the University of Massachusetts is, is, is becoming a, um, an approved. Uh, they are registered with our cable office. They are our lead company um, with Verizon and Comcast being participants and everything being chased with City Shadow. All right, so they're gonna be, you're going to register with Dig Say if they're going to be act as like a utility? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Is UMass going to gonna, uh, um, uh, have a, contra a contract with um, U uh, Dig Safe and act like a utility company? Uh, no. Well, Dig Safe, this is Jim Dolman from BBH Integrated Services. Um, Dig Safe will be notified by the contractor when they're installing all of this. As far as the duck banks themselves, these duck banks are um, being installed by the university. Um, in the new roadway for utility use, but the university will have a conduit in there in case they need to pull something through. But in, in, in the future, if somebody uh, was to dig in that road, uh, they call it dig safe. Dig safe mocks up the uh, the street, and you know you have you have to be in a, a, a um, company that that, um, that that has a contract with dig, dig safe. In essence, if somebody dug up your dug up your um, your, your conduit, what happens? Who's, who, are you going to respond to it, or are you going to contract with somebody? You know, what are you doing? What's UMass doing? Um, that is a good question. I will have to get back to you on that. That has to be headed up before we go forward with, with, with this. Um, Does it change things if we have a Verizon or a Comcast as a lead company and the UMass is a participant? If, if, if Verizon or Comcast agrees to, to, to do the necessary repairs for, for UMass, then yeah. We're but okay it's about who's maintaining their conduit and then yeah. being registered with Dixie. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we have several other universities in the city that own conduit in public streets. And uh, the question's always been asked if someone digs the street and they need to know ahead of time and they call DigSafe, if you're not a member of DigSafe, the conduits don't get marked out. Somebody starts digging the street, they could destroy the conduit so, uh, inadvertently. So there has to be some mechanism for UMass to either join DigSafe or to have a mechanism to allow for the um, the notification of how that uh, happens. Sure, um, we certainly understand that uh, request. I just we yeah. need to look into that a little bit more, and we can come back to you. This board uh, you know, um, encourages you know private private companies and, and universities or whoever you know to to, uh, you know, to contract with the utility companies. It just ma it makes it much easier in the future, you know, the future takes and make the future use of the world. Okay, thank you. This 
on the telecommunications piece again. Uh, it's not clear what the start point and end point is in telecommunication. Is this showing a segment? Yes. Can you give um, us a little background on what the proposal is? Sure. Yep. The, the telecommunication line that will be, uh, that we were just speaking about, that will have uh, the city conduit, city shadow conduit, Verizon and Comcast. Um, if you look at your um, grant of location plan, on the left-hand side, um, on the south side of Mount Vernon Street, there's a connection uh, to a manhole at that location. That conduit will then run up through Mount Vernon Street, and it will continue on all the way up to all the way up through University Drive North um, to feed the three non-campus buildings that are up that way. Um, we also have a connection to a separate Verizon manhole, which is just south of the Half Moon. So you'll see there'll be a small uh, four-way conduit that's coming off uh, to the south. And where is this stuff at the, on the northern side of uh, University Drive West? This stuff right here? Nope. The Telecommunications University Drive West. Okay. That one. Yep. What's that? What's happened there? Uh, this is the connection for the utility. We have one that will continue up, and this will be going along University Drive North. We do, in parallel, have another connection that um, makes a southerly turn down University Drive West. So that, that's a manhole at the end of that duck bank. I, I can't really. And it, it's, the way it's annotated on the plan, I'm not sure if it's a manual. Yes, that, that is a manual. That's the connection point for both okay. the service on the Interior Drive North and the campus. Uh, Thanks. For clarity, will I, will I identify that as the connection or beginning point on the updated plan? The, um, the manholes now are labeled uh, University of Massachusetts um, uh, for, for electrical and for um, telecommunications. What, what's happening with the electrical now? Is, is that a is that is that really a University of Massachusetts manhole, or is that a uh, manhole that's going to be owned by um, uh, Instar or Eversource or whatever? The electrical that is shown um, on this plan, which is in the southeast corner, right on the right on the edge, mm -hmm. right here. Right. This is a University of Massachusetts manhole part of their loop system that is being fed around the campus. The electrical that will be feeding the non-campus buildings of the University of North, the connection is off actually just off city property in this location here. That's why we don't have it shown. There is a, a new duct bank that will be continuing from that connection point all the way up University Drive North to feed the, uh, the three non-campus. You know, what, what, what you do on, on what the university does on its property, you know, it's fine. Um, you know, that's controlled, you know, by the by the electrical inspector, and you know, but what's on public property, you know, makes you a utility company. You know, you're acting like a utility company to put these manholes on, on, on public property. No, I'm sorry. I mean, you might have, I might not have explained it properly then. Um, the duck bank, there's an existing electrical duct bank that is owned by NSTAR, Eversource, up to, um, all, all the way up to the end of Mount Vernon Street. We are basically tying into that duct bank and continuing on. It will be their duct bank. It will be turned over, it will be their duct bank. The electrical lines that are currently shown in the, in the city of Boston property uh, in the darker shade here are actually University of Massachusetts sole duck banks. So it's it's feeding all of University of Massachusetts. In essence, we're trying to isolate between, just to your point, to isolate between utility duck banks and campus duck banks. But, but your, your manhole is on public property. Uh, it's, not on, it's not on UMass property. That is correct. Some of UMass's electrical infrastructure, including um, 
a telecommunication manhole and an electrical manhole are on uh, City of Boston property. Is that a separate grant obligation? They're in the sidewalk, though. They're in the eye on the sidewalk. Um, they are actually off of the sidewalk. The, the way the cross section, um, which will become more clear when we talk about the specific repair, uh, is we have the roadway, there's a cycle track, there's a sidewalk, a tree lawn, and then it's internal of that. So it's, been, it's out of the street. It's Correct. The Correct. None of the uh, manholes and or access ways for the um, university's electrical or telecommunication infrastructure is in a roadway or in the in the public roadway. Same issue with, with the telecommunications. So, if in fact UMass does uh, you know, have a contract with Dick Save, you know, that's fine. If they, if they have a contract with somebody who participates in Dick Save, say that's fine also. It, it should resolve itself. Both questions are to each other. So, they, it should resolve itself. If they partner with a company who's registered with Dig Safe, do they need to be a participant or can UMass stay as the petitioner and have a. <coughs> So what we advertise will be okay. Correct. I believe so. Specific repairs. Can we talk about the specific repairs? Sure. Thank you. I'll turn it back over to uh, Kevin Wright. All right. The specific repairs. At this time, per the plan, we plan to install new concrete sidewalks and vertical granite curbing along Mount Vernon Street and University uh, Drive North in accordance with ADA and City of Boston standards. Accessible ramps have been uh, reviewed with Catherine Quigley as well as the cast in place and colored cast in place concrete paving. Um, to alleviate a concern regarding pedestrian and bicycle mixing at the intersection, we have added signage for bikes to walk bikes uh, across the street at the southwest ramp. We are coordinating with BWC regarding permeable pavers along the curb line, uh, which is a comment that we received during Commissioner Shea's review. The university plans to install new LED street lights in the area of Mount Vernon Street. Uh, removal of existing lights are required in this area with the exception of two lights that will remain in the Half Moon, half moon area location. Um, we've met with Paul Kosha of the street lighting department to review these. They have all the material that we presented and have asked that we set up an LMI with the city regarding maintenance of these lights. The landscape areas on this plan are designated by the abbreviation LA. The university plans to install 13 new trees in the public way and remove 12 existing trees. We've been in contact with Liza Meyer of the Parks Department um, and have reached out to Greg Mossman with the appropriate information that they've required. Uh, since that time, Parks has scheduled our tree hearing for October 1st, at which time afterwards we'll come back before the commission uh, for our public hearing. New, new traffic signal equipment will be installed, including handholds, traffic signal um, control boxes, pedestrian signal posts. Uh, there's a painted asphalt paving for cycle tracks that transition bike lanes across to, as you cross University North Drive. Um, all appropriate striping and markings are shown on the plan. Within the half moon, we have relocated the location of an accessible parking space per BTD's request, and we've striped out 14 spaces per the required size. Uh, the team has recently, has recently met with uh, BTD, Pat Hoey, and Stephen Muse on August 4th. Members of the BRA have reviewed the layout uh, in the intersection, and we are in coordination regarding questions that they may have. 
Uh, at this time, it's open to the design team to answer any particular questions. First point that you, you made about walking bikes, where, where, what intersection did, did you reference when you were talking about the so signage? Right now, BTD has commented that that sign will not be what we want to stay there in the future, that it is not necessarily in the spirit of a cycle track to have a discontinued part where you have to walk your bike. Uh, but we're working with them on what our signage should be, um, and they're in contact with Stephen and, and BTD. Um, so that will probably be changed by the next year. Just Stephen Mews, he works for me. He was filling in for a meeting. Um, we just received a 25% design package yesterday. So we're under uh, review as we speak. I think it's a little early right now. Uh, we haven't looked at the overall concept. Uh, Don Burgess and his crew with the signalization, we've got to step through that. So that, that's in process right now. Pat's kind of worked with the BRA and Stephen uh, just on some of the design concepts. So we're getting into it now from the engineering perspective. So just to let you know that it's 25% and you know we're going through the technical merits of the design as we speak. Also, um, Captain, I know you want to speak. The, the amount of lights, how many lights are you changing out down there, street lights? I know you said you're gonna leave the two in, in the half moon. How many street lighting lights are you gonna swap out and then you mentioned an LMI? I think there's six to seven existing lights that are in this area that are gonna be removed uh, and I think the total is 10 that are coming back. Um, the, the 10 that are located here are uh, called out and they're all different types. Okay. Look at the details. Yep. We have uh, LA1, LA2, and I believe uh, LA, LB, yep. LB is the other one. Uh, so there's four existing lights here at the intersection, and then as you come along the way here, on, uh, the rest of the number, there's a couple that are scattered. And then we, we're going to evenly space out the new ones. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And did I hear you say there's an, there's an LMI that you're going to maintain these going forward? We, we were asked by the uh, street light division to set up that. The legal team from UMass uh, has been advised to contact Sean Wu okay. to set up an LMI regarding that. Yeah, we have agreements uh, for them to, to uh, maintain the improvement other than the street lights. The street lights are normally to maintain by, by public works for street lighting. You know that's a Thank you. Catherine. Uh, Catherine Quigley, Disabilities. I just wanted to go back to the comment about the signage on the cycle track. Um, I brought it up as an issue from the pedestrian perspective that the pedestrian ramp is directly perpendicular to the end condition of the cycle track. Um, I'm concerned that we are proposing more and more cycle tracks without a um, consistent signage package or markings on the pavement. And I've requested the opportunity to discuss that both with this project team and sort of as a, a general issue as they're coming online. Um, so I wanted to make that point that it shouldn't just be a, a BTD issue. We should be involved in that conversation. Thanks. BTD agrees with that wholeheartedly. Uh, again, it's at a 25% design level. So first, so we're getting a look at it right now, and certainly we'll have you as part of that uh, review, as well as Boston Bikes, et cetera. So, we have a new bikes it. coordinator. We flagged this as an issue to, uh, so that we can start developing cycle rack and ramp standards uh, so that we've got a, a citywide thing that's acceptable to BTD and accessible. Uh, I see the drawings you're coordinating the trees uh, with, with Boston Parks to file, which is great. But there's a note on here that says um, uh, tree plants are typical. Uh, what is the tree plant? Uh, you know, I can't find the detail on it. Uh, Ian Sherling from Sasaki Associates. Could you please just repeat that question for me? Yeah, uh, the, you have notes on here saying that you're going to coordinate with Fox Plant for, for the uh, tree plantings, which is great. You know, but there's, uh, there's also a note on here that says tree plant are typical. See detail? I can't find a detail on the tree planted. What is it? This detail is in reference to our design package and, and, and planting details. 
within the overall construction documents and conform set. So that may be um, the typical that you are seeing there. Um, in terms of the species of the new trees that are being planted. So I just want to make sure that not a plant there, it's an actual tree pit, right, of some type. Right. And that detail will need to appear within this plan set if you're sure. calling it out. Sure. In this plan. Sure. So the planter itself is eight feet wide of lawn, and it is uh, three feet deep, and that is a typical continuous trench where all of these trees will be planted um, between the curb line and the concrete sidewalks. Which is more of a tree pit than That's a correct. It's not a structure. That's correct. I know you have a, a tree hearing on October 1st. It's my understanding that you'd, you'd like to come here uh, on the 8th, possibly, of October? You, you think that's enough time? I know Mr. Hesford has to review the design plans and uh, the utility, private utility stuff that Water and Sewer has to, to, to solidify with, with the signed documents. Is five weeks enough time? Um, I, I believe. Five weeks is enough time. I know that the 25% uh, was just issued for Mount Vernon, so um, there's definitely um, working with Commissioner Hesford on that one, um, and then um, working with Amy Cording on the uh, signage at the intersection. And, but I think um, the design team is available at any time um, that is convenient, and uh, I think five weeks would be enough time to work through those and modify the plans appropriately. Okay. Yeah. All right. We'll see you on October 8th for a public hearing. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Second item of new business, Bunker Hill Street, Vine Street, Charlestown, grant of location on a petition by Crown Castle NG East LLC. My name is Kosta Yovanovich. I'm government relations manager for Crown Castle NG East LLC. And with me this morning is Rich Shepard, who is our project manager for our network expansion in, in city of Boston. We're here today to introduce our petition that seeks the grant of lead company status with no participants for the installation of a segment of telecommunications conduit and a grant of location for a segment of aerial fiber all in the uh, district of Charlestown. And uh, Rich will explain the particulars. Good morning, commissioners. My name is Richard Shepard, project manager for Crown Castle. On uh, December 18th, 2014, Crown Castle was um, granted the location of 11 of 12 new DAS antennas within the city of Charlestown, um, Charleston area of Boston. Yeah, including in, in that petition was the location of this DAS antenna called Node 101, which is on Bolton Street. Um, at that point in time, we had, um, our design included utilizing telephone conduit um, all the way to right in front of the node and then a small dig right over to the pole. Unfortunately, that telephone conduit was, very, was uh, unavailable, and the only piece that we were able to obtain from Verizon for lease was this section between uh, Manhole 81 and 82. Um, above and beyond, before that, we actually did a, an exhaustive search of any available um, city shadow, which there isn't in this run. So the, the redesign includes uh, uh, the installation of one four-inch PVC conduit and an, a four-inch uh, PVC city shadow from Horizon Manhole 10 over 82 to a midway point of a three by three vault, um, and then to pole one Vine Street, and then aerial rising at that, that pole, and then aerial that two sections, uh, and then feeding the node aerially. Um, the, just for your information, the power for that node is actually an aerial feed power, so there's no, no need for digging in this, for this. 
All the, um, another point, all the uh, letters of notification were sent out and uh, uh, no participants were identified, but we did receive uh, responses from city agencies about their review of the plans. Um, two weeks be enough time? Absolutely. You're missing your friend, Mr. Albee, today. Yeah. All right. All right, we'll see you for a public hearing on September 17th. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Third item of new business, 230 West Broadway, South Boston, Sidewalk Cafe, on a petition by Foodies Market. Good morning. Uh, my name is Hillary Holmes. I'm with Howard Stein Hudson. We're the civil engineer for the project. And I'd like to introduce Randy Lathrop with RG Lathrop Consulting and our client Foodies. And we have Victor Leon Sr. here representing Foodies. I'd just like to go over the project briefly. We're at 230 West Broadway and we're at it's Foodies Market in South Boston. And it's a full service grocery store. And they would like to propose uh, temporary outdoor seating in the sidewalk in the front of their building. Um, the temporary seating would abut the building. There's four tables and chairs and one accessible space. Um, this seating would be open to the public and it is only intent it's really intended just for carry out service only. It's not going to be served. This is not a restaurant. So if you know people were to get food in the market like a you know, from the deli, then they could come and sit at the tables and eat, um, which is why we're not proposing a barrier. Um, we are providing five foot clear path in the sidewalk for pedestrians. Um, Foodies has agreed, you know, they'll manage the tables and the chairs and make sure that they're within the license boundary and as depicted with on the plan. Have you done a quick uh, level of service analysis as required by the guidelines? Level of service? For pedestrians? Um, no, no, we haven't. Okay, you can get that to me. Get that to me. There's yeah, really uh, no issue with the seating. Uh, is there some kind of area to dispose of the packaging? And yes, we'll have a trash receptacle there on the sidewalk. We have it. That would be my concern, just with, with the amount of foot traffic that goes yep. up and down West Broadway. Can you show the trash on the plan? Yes. Um, yes, we're proposing one traffic receptacle right here near the seating. Full design is going to maintain that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank well, I mean, most of the stuff that we get, I know that, that some of the pizza boxes and stuff is contaminated, but um, more and more, most of the stuff we see uh, thrown out can actually be recycled. And, and they make very nice side-by-sides now, which doesn't occupy too much space. Um, something like that. I'd, I'd appreciate it if you could entertain that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, the sidewalk policy requires, uh, um, you know, some type of containment. Uh, is or it's fencing or it's something. So uh, that requirement is only if it is being served, as this is for public. Uh, so you could get food from another restaurant and bring it and sit here. Um, it's similar to Walton's out on uh, uh, School Street down here, where it's just tables and chairs for general seating, not necessarily specific to the community seating. On the, um, on the bottom detail, it's sh it showing exterior store entry mm -hmm. that's going right through uh, the this, this seating. Yes. And you, can't, you can't block an egress. We're not blocking this. So the store entry is located right here in the purple. So we're not blocking the store entry. Well, the detail below it is showing that the store entry goes right through the seating. Well, yes, we have three tables and chairs over here. You have, you have an arrow for your entry going right through the seat. Yes, yeah, so I mean, we, we originally intended to put all four seats over here, but because of the need to provide a five foot clear space, we moved one of the tables over here that has an accessible uh, seating space. Are you saying you're in? 
chemistry is in, in the location you're depicting. No, it's depicted here. No, it is depicted. We have seating on each on each side of the entrance. You don't have the same drawing we're looking at here. And the drawing we have in front of us is showing your entry. So it might right also be that this is a, a sliding door. So I think that it might be a part of the fixed and the door slides into that piece of it. So there's like a glass sliding uh, door at the front. So I think it's in front of the fixed thing that the door slides into and not necessarily the door itself. I, I'm, showing, I'm showing multiple entries. I, I'm showing an entry where you're showing it on your drawing there. I'm also showing the door entry going right through, right through the ceiling. You know, you can't have a both. Yeah, yeah, we, you you got to change this card. Take a look card. at the plan that you submitted, which is not that one. Okay. Um, it is the same plan. It's just that we just had moved the seating. So we do we do have the entry located properly. It is a sliding door, but this is the actual opening of the entrance. Okay, I, I understand that, but you just have a detail down, yeah. that I'm looking at right that here. That needs to be corrected. It does say store entry. Oh, I'm and sorry. And the arrow goes right through the ceiling. I'm sorry. No, that is a typo. I apologize. Okay. No, this this leader is intended to point to the okay. store entry. No, that that is a typo. So you'll correct that. Yes. Yes. Thank That'll you. That'll be corrected. Thank you. Thank you. Miss Quigley. Uh, so I just wanted to talk about that. I didn't realize that the drawings were actually wrong. I had asked that they shift all of the tables down so that the tree pits don't create a significant pinch point. Um, and due to the fact that this is more a public seating, we're looking at it as a community benefit rather than a sidewalk cafe, which is why um, some of those rules aren't being applied. You can assume two weeks will be enough time? Yes. Okay. We'll see you for a public hearing on September 17th. Okay. Thank you Thank very you. much. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor? Aye.